So if we want to start with the originals, the best starter to choose in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green is undeniably Bulbasaur. Obviously, in the early game, it's incredible as you have 4x attack on Brock's team, but it's also super good against Misty and then resists Lieutenant Surge and Erica. And then it's got one of the most broken things of all of Gen 2, the Leech Seed Toxic Combo. For those of you that don't know, Leech Seed's damage is affected by Toxic's damage algorithm, so it will increase proportionally every turn. You slowly start to do more damage, you're slowly starting to heal more, it is just a ridiculously broken strategy. So even through the mid game where Venusaur and Ivysaur should be just okay, this strategy makes them absolutely cracked. You wreck Giovanni in all three instances along with the final gym. And while I do think that choosing Squirtle will make the game pretty smooth, there are just so many good water options, it's not not really all that necessary. Charmander, good luck. Now in Pokemon Yellow, um, it's obviously Pikachu, but if we move over to Gold, Silver, and Crystal, it gets a little bit more complicated. See, a lot of people will argue that Feraligator is the best Pokemon because you can basically solo the game with it, but I don't really think that's a fair way to view how good a Pokemon is, because there are a ton of other Pokemon that you could also solo the game with. We're talking a non-overleveled Pokemon in the context of a team. And so under these circumstances, in all three instances of Gen 2, it is Cyndaquil. So people love to hate Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum because there aren't enough Fire Pokemon, but that problem actually originated in Gen 2. If you don't go with Typhlosion, your only other Fire options are a Growlithe that can't evolve, Magmar and not in Crystal, and a Ponyta right before the Elite Four. And because all Fire moves are special in this game, Ponyta is not an option. So beyond legendaries, you literally have one choice for a fire Pokemon. And I mean, it's it's really good. It's got high special attack. It's got a ton of speed. Learns both fire punch and thunder punch. It, it's just really overall great. And while I do still think that Totodile is a really good option, because the special split hadn't happened here yet, it kind of suffers with high attack and water moves. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, please subscribe, because this is a really fresh channel. Now, if we want to move on to Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, I mean, it's it's quite obviously Swampert. Swampert has insane typing, being only weak to grass. It wrecks the first rock gym, it wrecks the third electric gym, and it decimates the fourth fire gym. Give it some ice moves, and it's also really great against the Elite Four. You can give it Rock Tomb, it's just, it's so versatile. Sure, Swampert may be afraid to touch grass, but as long as you keep it away from that, you cannot lose. Moving on to Fire Red and Leaf Green, um, it's still Bulbasaur. There's no Toxic Leech Seed combo in this game, but it gets some better moves, and for that, it kind of just manages to stay really good. I do think that in this Gen Charmander gets a bit better learning Metal Claw, but Squirtle, again, very easily replaceable for a Lapras, a Gyarados, whatever, and Bulbasaur just kind of finds itself being the best in this game as well. Now, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum probably has the most balanced set of starters. Empoleon, Water Steel, amazing typing. You've got Torterra, super bulky, learns Earthquake. Just really keep it away from ice. But, I mean, you know what's coming, Chimchar. It, again, it, it really just comes down to one, like, limited fire Pokemon. At least in these games, it, it's really Ponyta or Infernape. Infernape wrecks the first rock gym. It decimates the second grass gym, really good against the fighting gym, whether it's third or fifth, depending on the game you're playing. It's great against gym six steel, and obviously the ice gym, it just is, it's over. <laughs> Rest in peace, Obama Snow. I mean, you've also got close combat, which does 180 damage when you consider stab. Infernape is near irreplaceable. Now, while Fire Red and Leaf Green saw the same outcome, Heart Gold and Soul Silver actually has a different result. Gen 4 finally saw the special physical split, and this makes Totodile so much better. While it was already good, I think this is enough to put it over Cyndaquil. You can get this Pokemon Waterfall Bite. Ice Fang and Earthquake, and it, it literally just the coverage there is, is more than enough. With this typing, it can almost solo the Elite Four. Bite an Earthquake, wreck Will and Koga. Against Karen, the only thing that can stand up to it is Umbreon, which can't do anything back to it. And apart from Gyarados, Feraligator can sweep Lance. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. Now, full disclosure, I've, uh, I've never played Black and White. So this isn't really so much my opinion, it's just the communities, but I think most people go with Tepic. Really just based on gym advantages alone, Tepic is the obvious choice here. But if I'm wrong, feel free to let me know. <laughs> 
Now, moving on to X and Y, I think this is gonna go up to Froakie and Greninja. Greninja has a really sick typing and is overall just a, a great Pokemon to use. Um, the only thing that's a little bit weird with X and Y is you get all three Kanto starters. So in reality, like you, whatever one you get, you're just gonna fill out with the other two nine times out of 10. The starter you choose isn't that important in X and Y, but if we're talking best, I really think it has to be Greninja. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, not a whole lot changes. Uh, Swampert still wrecks everything. And if we look at Sun, Moon, and the Ultras, it's actually Rowlet. Grass Ghost on Decidueye gives it a very interesting typing. With the typing, with the moves, it does really well against the Trials. And then you also wreck two of the Kahunas, the Ground and the Rock. I mean, I guess Water does as well. Primarina is good, but it just suffers from being a Water type and being replaceable. Sure, Fairy, it is it is really nice. I think it's close, but man, Decidueye, just so good. Now, if we move on to Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, um, this is a really obvious choice. Pikachu, not even close. Pikachu gets a move called Zippy Zap, which always lands as a crit and has priority. So it's basically a stabbed, super effective, critting quick attack. Eevee is a normal type and it doesn't evolve. Um, what more do I need to say? Yeah, it gets moves, but it's just, it's just, no, poor Eevee. It's a Pokemon that exists to evolve. And when you can't, it's just, it's trash. Now moving on to Sword and Shield, this is actually the first set of base games that has two different answers. So if you're gonna play Sword, I actually think the best starter to choose is Inteleon. Now, I really like Rillaboom. I think it's a great choice for a playthrough, but Inteleon is better. So the first three gyms are Grass, Water, Fire. And of these three gyms, the Fire one is by far the hardest. Inteleon will give you a much better time through here. But it also wrecks Sword's Rock Gym and two of Rayhan, the final weird dragon guy, because he has two... Well, what does Rayhan... Uh, what does Rayhan have? My man has got a, a rock type Gigalith and a ground type Sanaconda. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. So yeah, Inteleon does really good work through Sword. Th and through the rest of the game, it's like a great sweeper, but it's not like that far ahead. So when you go over to Shield and you have an Ice Gym, I actually think that makes Cinderace the better choice for this run. Like with Cinderace, you don't suck against the Fire Gym, you wreck the Ice Gym, and you do have fighting moves for the Dark Gym. Of course you have fighting moves because Game Freak is literally stuck in a vicious cycle of wanting every Fire Starter to be fighting. But it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm a Rillaboom guy, but objectively, I think it is the worst starter. Anyway, lastly, we have the recently dropped BDSP. Um, Chimchar is Chimchar. And now it gets power up punch at level 12. Every time you land a punch, your attack goes up. Everything that I said before applies, but extra busted in the early game. I think literally just end the video right there. Just boom, no outro, just done.